Hi everybody and welcome to the second Mega Drive Genesis Beginners Game Dev Tutorial. And we have a very exciting lesson coming up because today I'm going to teach you how to do parallax scrolling. I think that for many of us parallax scrolling almost has a magical quality to it. It really helped to bring these game worlds to life. And so it's definitely something that we want to use in our own games. Although there were 8-bit games which did use a kind of parallax technique, it's really in the 16-bit era that parallax really came into its own and it became almost a, a standard feature of pretty much every single game. It almost got to the point where it'd be odd if a Mega Drive game didn't have any parallax scrolling. It made the whole world and the backgrounds look oddly flat and lifeless. In today's lesson we're going to focus on the most basic form of parallax scrolling that would be scrolling by plane rather than by tile or by line. Actually, when it comes to implementing parallax scrolling in SGDK, it's actually a pretty straightforward process and we're only going to need to write a few more lines on top of the lines we already wrote for our background lesson. However, during the course of this lesson, we're actually going to learn a lot about firstly how code works and some important computer programming concepts. And we're also going to learn a lot about how the Mega Drive VDP, how it stores backgrounds and how it displays backgrounds. Speaking of the background lesson from last time, I'm really happy that so many people seemed to enjoy it and were able to follow along because that was the one thing I was nervous about if I maybe didn't explain things clearly enough and maybe I went too fast or too slow or covered over to some sections too quickly but I'm very glad everyone seems to have had a good time with it. I especially always appreciate any kind of comments on any of my videos but especially for these tutorials I think it's very encouraging for me and probably for other people who are just watching the tutorials to see people leave a message to say hey I did it I managed to code it it's correct it I have maybe a few difficulties but now it's displaying and I think it really helps everyone so I'm really grateful if anyone who does manage to create a ROM managed, will leave a message and say hey I did it it's really encouraging for everyone I think. And briefly on the topic of comments, since I started the channel last year, I've been getting lots of comments saying, how can we support you and so on? Do you have a Patreon? Well, I was always wanted to wait until I had at least the tutorials up and running because my, my channel was called uh, Pixies Retro Game Dev Tutorials after all, and in a long time didn't have any tutorials. So I finally set that up, but I will speak more of the Patreon at the end of the video. For now, let's get on with the parallax scrolling lesson. As I already said, we're going to carry on from where we left off on our background lesson. We've already got the background stored in the VRAM and we've displayed the backgrounds, the Streets of Rage backgrounds. And now we're just going to add the scrolling. Similar to how before, we used a function called pal uh, underscore set palette. This time we're going to use a function called VDP underscore set scrolling mode to decide to tell SGDK what kind of scrolling we want. Now the explanation it gives here is actually pretty clear, it's pretty good. You see we have hscroll plane, so we can scroll by a plane and it tells you what it does. Then we can scroll by a tile and finally we can scroll by line. So there's 244 lines and we can scroll each line individually. Now today, as I said before, we're going to concentrate on the, we're going to focus on the most simple form. So we're going to choose hscroll underscore plane. And I hope you all remember from last lesson that these functions, they need some certain amount of information and we separate that information by commas. So the second piece of information it needs is the vertical scrolling mode. So the first one is a horizontal scrolling mode. Now you notice here that there aren't so many options. We have free scroll by plane or we have by a two tile. So there's no line scrolling. There's no vertical line scrolling. Only we can scroll every two tiles or we can scroll the whole plane and again since we're doing a very basic lesson today we're going to scroll the vertically by plane. For those of you who are not quite sure about what scrolling by plane means it means literally just scroll the whole entire screen and as usual don't forget the semicolon at the end otherwise you'll get a compile error. Next of all we're going to use another function this time we're going to set the horizontal scroll. This function will also require two different pieces of information. The first one you can see here, it says VDP plane, plane. So that's basically asking which background layer you want to scroll. So it'll either be BG underscore B or BG underscore A. Remember BGB is the very far background and BJ you can think of it more as the foreground. So here we're going to do BGB first, the background. And the second thing it's asking for is called S16 value. 
So it gives a bit of a uh, an explanation there. This basically means how far you want to offset the scrolling. So how, how far you want the background to, sc to scroll on the screen. So that can either be a negative value or a positive value. Some of you may remember when we used the VDP draw image X function in the last lesson, we had these two values here towards the right, whereas the X and Y coordinates of the background. And it's, it's almost similar in a way, but we're going to see what the difference is very soon. So for now, I'll put zero and I'm going to change that to 10 now, just so we can see the effect. So remember, whenever you change anything to the file, make sure you save because control S and then control shift P and we're going to compile it. So I know that a couple of people have issues finding the Genesis code last time. If you just begin to type Genesis code, then it will eventually show up. So as long as you've uh, you've installed the Genesis code extension, so that should be fine. So control shift P and now we're going to select compile and run. Now I'm about to drag the Gens emulator just a bit to the left and I'm going to stretch it out. Even from here, I think you can see that the screen has shifted a bit to the right. So there's a little gap to on the left here. And I don't know if you can guess how many, how big that gap is. Next, I'm going to return the VDP set horizontal scroll back to zero. And I'm actually going to make the VDP draw image X. I'm going to make the X coordinate 10. And we're going to compare the two and see what the difference is. Okay, so this time I think you can see that it's actually shifted very much to the right, much more than it did when we did the VDP set horizontal scroll to 10. Now I've just skipped to another part of the video here just so that you see them side by side. So the reason why the 10 in the VDP draw image XE shifts so much far to the right than the 10 in the set horizontal scroll is simply because it uses tiles. So that's 10 tiles in the VDP draw X. And that means that it's 10 times 8 pixels, whereas the VDP set horizontal scroll is measured in pixels. The reason for that is quite simple. Obviously, when we're actually scrolling the background, we want it to scroll quite subtly. We don't want it to scroll. If, if it scrolled per, uh, per tile, it would be very choppy, whereas scrolling per pixel means it can scroll very smoothly. Here, I've scrolled the background by 80 pixels, so it's about the, a quarter of the way across the screen because it's 320 across so 80 pixels rather than 80 tiles for the VDP set horizontal scroll. So obviously the VDP draw image X is just simply for drawing the image on the screen initially so it's not meant to be used for any kind of scrolling that's why it uses tiles rather than pixels whereas the VDP set horizontal scroll is for scrolling so it does it on a per pixel basis. Now, although I keep using the word scrolling, we haven't actually scrolled anything yet. All we've done is shifted a static image to the right. If we really want to scroll, we have to take the second value in this VDP set horizontal scroll, the number, and we need to make it so it changes all the time as I'm doing here. It's from one, two, then three, then four, then five. And in order to do that, we're going to use something called a variable. Now variables are used in pretty much every computer programming language and as you can tell by the name, it's a value that varies over time. Now you did actually create a variable before in the last lesson without realizing it, this u16 int equals tar user index, but let's explain it a bit more clearly now. So when you create a variable, the first thing you have to tell the C programming language, programming language is what kind of data type is it? So we're going to use int here for int. So this is means an integer. So it means a whole number, so not a decimal number, like one, two, three, four, five, and not 1.6 or anything like that. The second thing we're going to need to do is to give the variable a name. So just as when we put the backgrounds onto the ROM, we gave the backgrounds a special name that we use within our program. We're also going to give the variable a name. And then finally, we're going, to, we're going to assign it a value. So to start off, we will assign it the zero. So we say equals zero. And as always, don't forget the semicolon at the end. What I'm going to do next is to simply copy and paste the um, our variable name and putting it into the function. So now instead of a set number, we have a variable that can change over time. So when the program, when it sees this variable here, it will simply go back to where it's declared and say, okay, what value does this variable have? So for example, if we change it to 25 here and we recompile, it will look at the h scroll uh, underscore offset and it will say, okay, there's 25 in it. So we replace it with the number 25. 
and as you saw from that screen just there it shifted to the right by 25 just as if we put 25 straight it directly into the set horizontal scroll however the whole point of using the variable is to use it so that the value can change over time so in order to do that we're going to have to add to it as time goes by so i just highlighted the end it said in plus equals just now because we'd use that to add the tiles into the vram but we can use it here too to add to the h scroll offset to make sure it changes over time so what we're going to do here is we're going to do h scroll underscore offset and do plus equals one now what that would do it will, every cycle it will add one single value to it so it will start with zero then one then two then three then four and that will create the scrolling effect that we need okay now let's compile and see if it makes a difference <laughs> and it hasn't it's just simply scrolled by one single pixel it's shifted by one pixel but it's still not moving so what's the problem here what are we doing wrong in order to explain this, we're going to have to talk a bit about how the main.c file is structured. For now, we can split it into three parts. So the first part is this bit before int main. So this first part here. And then the second part is from this open bracket just below int main all the way up to where it says while. And the third part is within this, this while and within these two brackets with while. So that's the third part. In the first part, as well as the lines including the different files and the SUDK, we can also put the variables we did earlier. Now I just want to point out that having those variables in the second section just after main, it wasn't causing a problem, it's not the cause of the non-scrolling issue we've been having, but I just want to point out the difference between the different sections and when it comes to the first part, you can put the variables there. And in fact, we'll be doing that throughout most of these tutorials. If however I try to put h scroll offset plus equals one, so that's the little calculation where we're adding one to h scroll offset, then we're gonna get a problem. You see we have an error. And that's because when it comes to the first part, you can't put anything in there that's being calculated by the CPU or, or DMA. So that includes simple calculations as well as all the functions we've been using such as VDP, draw image X and so on. Okay, now on to the second section. So that's all the area in between the first brackets of main all the way up to where it says while. Now in this section, we want to put anything that we want calculated or action just one time, just once. So things such as loading up the tiles into the VRAM or, or setting the palette or putting the image on the screen is very suitable to put in this section here. Now, when you eventually make a very big game with separate levels and music and so on, we're going to want to do this more than once. But for these simple examples and just to show how the code works, uh, this is very suitable to put into the second section, this little section just after main. Now, I've just commented out the uh, those three lines and we're going to put all that stuff I spoke about before about setting the palette and loading up the VRAM. I'm going to pull it in, take it from the main the second section and putting it in between the while brackets so that will be the third section now let's see what kind of result we get so as you can see it actually looks okay and oh oh okay <laughs> so now it's starting to go a bit crazy the picture's going a bit wild now why is this happening now remember how i said in that second section the bit from the first open bracket of main all the way up to the while word that's stuff we only want to do once, whereas anything we put within these two brackets within while is stuff that we want to do every single frame, so it'd be 60 times per second. Now, if we put all that stuff that we just put in there about loading up the VRAM and putting the image on the screen, and it's just doing it over and over again, it's very not only wasteful of resources, but it's probably overloading maybe the DMA uh, bandwidth or something, which is making it copy the tiles over and over again, and eventually it just corrupts and it makes a mess. So that was the reason for that. So what do we need in while? What should be in this within this while? We call it a while loop. We call it a main game loop. What do we need to put in there? Well, one thing is this sys do blank process. Now, be careful because in older versions of SGDK, they use a different a different function. So if you're looking at old tutorials, you might notice and you have to use this function for newer versions. But anything in the while loop is stuff that's going to be checked over and over again. So, for example, things such as when we're doing the controls, 
Is the A button being pushed? Is the left D-pad being pushed? This we need to check over and over again every frame because it changes throughout the game or stuff such as is Alucard getting hit by an enemy? Any kind of game logic stuff needs to go within this while loop and it's going to repeat over and over. It's going to be checked every single frame. Now, which action or actions do we need to be repeated every single frame over and over again in order to make our scrolling finally work? For this VDP set scrolling mode, we're just telling SGDK what kind of scrolling we want. So that can be done once, so it can be left in main. However, when it comes to adding to the H scroll offset, this is obviously something we want to be done every single frame. We want it to add one per frame. And also the VDP set horizontal scroll. This is going to actually update where the uh, where the background is on the screen so we obviously need to have that as well because it's going to update to every single frame. Since we've taken such a long time to get here let's just have a recap of what we've done in order to make the screen scroll. So first of all we had to declare this variable so we had to declare we had to tell you what data type it is give it a name and give it a value which is zero and secondly we had to within the second section within main we added we told uh, sgdk what kind of scrolling mode we wanted whether it be lion or tile or plane scrolling we chose plane scrolling and finally within the third section within our while while game loop we have to update the h scroll offset variable so that the scrolling actually happens so we add one to each frame it doesn't really matter whether it goes before or after the vdp set horizontal scroll function and the VDP horizontal scroll function itself is the actual function that updates the screen. So it's going to adjust its position each frame according to whatever the heat scroll offset is. So when our code is actually running, it's going to start from the very top of the main.c file and it's going to go all the way down until it gets to this while loop in between these two brackets. And it's just going to repeat the code within the brackets over and over again. So once it gets to this do v blank process, it's going to go back up to where it says well, just where that first bracket opens, and it's going to go through the code again and again. So as I'm just demonstrating here, it just goes through. So the VDP set horizontal scroll will update the screen, then it's going to add one to the H scroll offset, then it's going to go do the sys feedback process, which should update the screen, then it's going to go back to the top of this while loop, and it's going to update to use the VDP set horizontal scroll again, then H scroll offset is going to add one, and so on and so on. Now let's compile the code and see if it finally works. And finally, at long last, we have success. So it's scrolling at one pixel per frame. So it should be around 60 pixels per second. And it's not looking too bad. So if you managed to do that, then congratulations. You did your first product scrolling on the Mega Drive or Genesis. If we subtract one from H scroll offset each frame instead of adding one, what do you think will happen? And now we get the scrolling going to the left instead of the right. So if you want it to go to the left, you do a use a negative number. If you want it to go to the right, you use a positive number. And of course, we can change the speed of the scrolling simply by changing how much we add or subtract from heat scroll offset from that variable. So now we've changed it to two per tile, so it's twice as fast as before. And if we change it again, for example, to minus five, just get rid of the P there. I did a little typo there. If we compile again, then you should see that it's scrolling even faster now. I do find that the scrolling in gens looks a bit more jerky than when you put your ROM into your Mega Drive, which I hope you do later on. And so hope once you actually get it into a actual console, hopefully it'll look a lot more smooth than it does there. While we have got the screen to finally scroll, there's still a problem where we seem to be have some missing graphics as a blank space. So what's going on and how do we fix it? Our problem is that our background image is only 320 pixels by 224 pixels, but the actual Mega Drive VDP, when it stores the backgrounds, it actually stores them as 512 by 256 pixels. The reason the console does this is so that there are always tiles loaded either above, below, to the left or to the right of the visible screen. That way when the scrolling happens, it can happen in a very smooth way because it doesn't have to suddenly load in these tiles on the fly. It already has some prepared beforehand. In order to demonstrate this a little bit more clear, I'm going to add a sec second function. We only did horizontal scrolling before, we didn't do vertical scrolling, so we do VDP set vertical scroll. And again, we're going to apply it to the BGB background layer. And for now, we're just going to use the same variable as before, the H scroll offset. This means that they'll both scroll at the same speed, albeit one will be scrolling. It'll be scrolling horizontally or and vertically at the same time. So let's change it to minus equals two and let's see the result. 
so it's not very pretty but i hope you can see how when we scroll like this it shows the size of the the plane that the actual vdp stores and so we have lots of empty space and when it goes up or down it just repeats over and over again and just to make it super clear let's comment out the horizontal scrolling the set horizontal scroll scroll function and let's just see it so it's scrolling vertically only it doesn't store quite so many tiles above and below the image the visible image i guess that's because they're expecting most games to be scrolling mostly horizontally rather than vertically the solution to avoiding any gaps like we've been seeing before is obviously just to create an image that is 512 tiles horizontally by 256 vertically so here I've prepared these two Sonic 1 backgrounds, is a scene I'm sure you're all familiar with. And if we just compare it to the Streets of Rage graphic image we had before, if I just copy and paste it over here in a sprite, you can see it's much smaller, it's only 320 by 224. The reason the colors are a bit messed up is because it's using the, you know, the Sonic palette, so it looks pretty cool actually in its own special way. I have those two Sonic images available for download, so check in the video description and download the two images and simply copy them into your res folder. And remember before when we, we did the resources folder in order to put the graphics onto the cart, onto the ROM, we're going to do the same here. Now, if you recall, we gave the backgrounds a name that we use in the code. Now, we don't actually have to change that. All we need to change is the file name. So as long as we change the file name, we can continue to use the, the names we gave the backgrounds in our code. If we just swap the files over, then that will be fine. As always, don't forget to save the file before you move on to main. Now, sometimes it creates a bit of a problem if you don't make changes to main, but resources, it doesn't record the, the changes properly. So I just like write an S, then save, then delete the S and save again, so that main has changed and been saved and changed back to normal again, just to avoid any bugs. And if we compile, we'll see the result. Actually, let me just comment out the H scroll offset, the way it adds, just so we have a still image, just so we can see what it looks like when it's not scrolling. And if you look closely, um, because the image is taller than our last image, it's kind of, uh, we need to shift it a bit. So if we, if remember the VDP draw image, if we put a minus figure, it's going to shift it up by four tiles. So both of these backgrounds are going to shift up by four tiles. And if we recompile again, we should see that the image looks a bit more normal now. Okay, so now we can see the foreground, the ground, and it looks just as we expect Sonic to look like. Now let's get the image scrolling again. So we're going to get rid of the two forward slashes so it's not commented out anymore, the H-scroll offset, and let's change it to minus, uh, let's, let's change the scrolling to speed one, to a single one, and let's compile, save, compile, and let's see what it looks like now. So the background is, is scrolling both vertically and horizontally by one, but actually let's get rid of the vertical scroll and let's look at it in a more normal way as it looked like more in a Sonic game. So now it looks a bit more natural. Obviously we haven't done any animation in the backgrounds or any kind of palette stuff. So the water isn't, isn't glistening like it does in the real game, but I think it looks pretty nice. It's not too bad, right? So finally we've got no gaps. It's just pure graphics all the way. There are no black spaces. And so now it's starting to look like real parallax scrolling. However, when doing parallax scrolling, we often have the foreground also moving. It often moves at a slightly quicker pace than the background because the background's further away. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another variable, give it a different name. So that way they can, the foreground and the background can both scroll at different speeds. As well as having a new variable, we're also going to need a new VDP set horizontal scroll, but instead of scrolling the BGB layer, it's going to scroll the BGA layer. And instead of using the height scroll offset variable, it's going to use our new height scroll offset four for a foreground variable. Now at the moment, they're both moving by a minus one pixel per, per frame, but obviously we want the foreground to move a little bit faster. So let's make that minus two. And again, don't forget to save. And now we're going to do Control Shift P and compile and run and let's see the result. Okay, now I think it's looking really nice indeed. Uh, you can tell the foreground, I think you can see the seam 
where it goes from uh, one end to the other. We've got only half a tree there. So obviously when you create your own foreground, you're going to want to make it so it's seamless. So you don't even notice where the scrolling effect happens. Now, some of you may be wondering, especially since we're in Green Hill Stone, which was a very big level, we seem to only have uh, levels which are 512 pixels wide. And SGDK, you can have very big levels, very large levels and scroll them too, so that the camera follows the player. But for now, I think because we're in the beginner series, that's a bit more complex to do that. So we're just going to stick to this very simple scrolling for now. And uh, I think I would encourage all of you to do some as homework just to play about with some of the values. You can get some quite interesting effects as you're seeing here. I think I want to encourage you to have fun with it and, and change things around and just see what kind of effects you can, you can produce. Before we talk about the Patreon, I just want to show you one last thing. So some of you may be tempted to make it scroll even slower. So for example, we can use the, make the very far background, the BGB scroll at 0 0.5, but when we put 0 0.5 in, it doesn't scroll at all. The reason this is happening is because the number we're using, the data type is an integer, which is only a whole number. So it can't take decimal places. And even if we do 0 0.8, again, it's not moving at all. It just, I think it pretty much rounds it up to the nearest whole number. So, or rounds it up or down, depending on whether it's, you know, below 0 0.5 or above 0 0.5. So we can't do that. Now, the Mega Drive can do decimal numbers, but we can't use integers. We have to use a special data type, but in the future, I will do a whole lesson on, on data types and so on. So you will learn how to do much slower moving, which is especially important, not only for scrolling, but for things such as jumping because it using whole numbers isn't isn't agile enough it's not it's not small enough we need to use decimal places too but i will leave that for another time before we go for today i just have a few words about the patreon account so you can find it linked in the video description below i try and see if i can link it into the video as well people have been asking if i have a patreon account ever since i started releasing videos last year and you're, you're seeing my uh, my work from last year. I think uh, Alucard looks a bit weird now I look at it, but at the time I was very proud about doing this uh, marble gallery and adding the extra scrolling uh, columns in between. But at the time, the developer's diaries were all that I had on the channel. And from since the very beginning, my channel has been called uh, Pix Pixie Retro Game Dev Tutorials. So having tutorials has always been part of the plan and it's been nice to finally be able to do that and since i've started uploading tutorials i've been getting even more people just saying you know can do you have a patreon we just like to contribute a little bit so first of all i want to just to reassure people who won't be joining the patreon there won't be any exclusive le uh, lessons that you won't have access to and i think the kind of people who are asking me if i have a patreon they're not doing it for exclusive content that they going to exclude other people they just want to show a bit of appreciation maybe they have them some spare cash and they don't mind throwing you know five dollars or whatever a, a, a month to 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 help the channel but i don't want anyone to feel obligated to support the patreon because i do this as a hobby and i have a lot of fun doing it even putting together the tutorials is very fun i think remember at school when maybe a teacher had 30 students but here you can on youtube you can reach hundreds or maybe even thousands of people so i really hope that for I think the best thing people can do to support me is just to make games themselves and if one day you make a game and you say that you got started with these tutorials then I'll be really proud. For those that do want to support the Patreon I've got three tiers but they're all the same they don't give any special rewards it's just to do with how much people want to pay and in terms of exclusive content I think I will do when I have uh, when I'm preparing a video often I'd include you know I, I'd prepare lots of raw footage beforehand that I think I might want to use so I think the best thing would be to provide some of that raw footage of, of gameplay and so on just to, to patreons as a, a little thank you but it's something that's also eventually going to make its way into the final edited video so it's not something that non patrons are going to miss out on they just get to see it in the edited video a bit later but I'll give maybe patrons just a little quick preview of the raw footage and I think that's something that will be fair to everybody. YouTube has also recently implemented a type of tipping system is what I'll call it where you can just make a donation on the video to whoever you know whoever you're watching at the time and a couple of people have already done that on the tutorial video so thanks very much for that I really appreciate it so that's a another way you can support the channel if you would like to do so. 
Before I bid you all farewell, just a quick word about the next video in the tutorial series and it's going to be about creating your own graphics for the Mega Drive and Genesis. So we've already covered so far how to put the backgrounds onto the screen and now how to scroll those backgrounds and finally I think a lot of people are probably very keen now to create their own backgrounds, their own graphics and want to know what kind of format they need to be saved in, the limitations and so on. So I'm not the best pixel artist myself, as you can probably tell from my earlier work on the Castlevania as well as the recent work on the Shinobi games, but I'll mostly be focused on the technical aspects. So that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching and until next time, farewell.